Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, sir. Okay. Good afternoon, sir. Are you able to see the slide? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, so, yes, thank sir. so thank you for coming online. So it seems now you are taking seriously. So before me, most of you have joined. So as of now, total participant is uh, 17, including me, but it should have 19. Okay. Hope they might have some problem, right? That's why they may not be coming. Hope Kilo uh, Wangchu is there. Okay. Okay. So now we'll start our session. Uh, Okay, so we will start our session. So yesterday we have learned about the um, active and passive compensation. So under active compensation, we have studied a little bit on static bar system, right? So under static bar system, we have learned about some terminology. So when you will call it as a SPCS and when you will call it as a SPG, and then when you will call as SBS. This all terminology we have learned yesterday. And also we have completed the types of SVC. Okay, so there are different types of SVC. Okay, so from here, uh, we may uh, not be able to do for all the characteristics, all types of SVC. But what we will do is I will choose two, one for reactor type, another one for capacitor one. And then, so actually function will remain same. All will perform the same function to control the voltage and then improvement of power factor and all. But so we, if you go one by one, then we will not complete our syllabus. So what we will do is, is function working and everything will remain same. So we'll choose a thyristor control reactor and then thyristor switch capacitor, okay? These are the different types of SVC. But again, all this type of system, we will call it as a SVS. You might be knowing static bar system. Okay, so types of SVC we have completed. So now today we'll see general ones. So we'll not go to the uh, SVC. So later on we'll see SVC, but today what we will do is we'll just see the general characteristic of SVS, which means how it will control the voltage, actually our main unit itself is a control of voltage and reactive power. So first we'll see by using SVS system, how it will control the voltage and reactive power. Okay, so that's just general one. Then later on, we'll see the specific SVC devices like terrestrial control reactor and then terrestrial switched capacitor. Okay, so this we will see, but first, we have to know the general characteristic of SBS, which means this terrestrial control reactor as well as terrestrial switched capacitor. And then that I have explained about different types of capacitor, uh, sorry, not capacitor, compensator or SBC. So it will have a gen the same general characteristic, okay? But one will have more advantages, another one, okay? That's a different issue we will learn when we reach the particular one. But now we'll go through the general characteristic of SVS. So first we'll start with the ideal SVC, how ideal SVC, SVS should have, have. And then second one, we will go through the real characteristic. And then we'll also see the power system characteristic and then only we'll control the voltage. But just now we'll not see how it will control, but just now we'll see the ideal characteristic of SVS system. Okay. using that characteristic, so we have to apply it in the power system network, and then we will see how it will control the voltage and the reactive power. Okay, so first, let's see the ideal characteristic of an SVC system. So, okay, so in ideal SPS, so you can just see from the power system operation point of view, when we talk about the SVS, it is just the shan capacitor and then shan reactor. Okay, it is equivalent to shan reactor or inductor and then capacitors 
it, it will be connected in parallel and then that system is known as SVS. Okay, so from power system point of view, just you, already you have learned about the characteristic of inductor capacitor. So here, when we talk about the SVS, just uh, you connect in parallel and series and then see that, then it will come under the SVS. Okay. Or both of these has a, or both of these has a property which can control the voltage and reactive power at its terminal or at nearby bus in a prescribed manner. It means SPS, when we talk about the SPS, it's nothing, okay, there is nothing difficult or uh, very unique characteristic as such. You know already the characteristic of capacitor, you know already the characteristics of inductor. So you have to connect this in parallel or series. Sometimes you may have to connect only inductors. And then sometimes you may have to con uh, connect only capacitor or sometimes combine these two and then connect in parallel. This will become a SVS. Okay, so there is no different characteristic, but only thing is how we apply this. Okay, so later on, what we will do is we'll try to add some uh, switches here, which means thyristor, and then we'll see how to control further. Actually, this inductors and capacitor itself will control, but when we reach to the thyristor and then all, it will con uh, control the specific area. Okay, so here it will just control, but when we uh, see from the power system point of, power system operation point of view, so SVS is just equivalent to inductors and capacitors. Okay, there is shunt inductors and shunt capacitors, which has both, okay, so both of which can adjust the control voltage and then reactive power at its terminal or just nearby buses. Okay, so what it means is ideally, okay, so what it means is ideally this SVS, okay, static bar system should hold the constant voltage. Example, here we have 400, so just I'm giving example here, 400 volt. So if you employ this SPS, means SPS, you know, it is just shunt inductor and shunt capacitor. So ideally we have to maintain this, okay, 400 volt. Okay, so which means constant, Okay. okay, so ideally, so this SVS should hold the constant voltage, which means if it, there is 400 volt, it has to maintain at the 400 volt. Okay, if it is 11 kV, 400 kV, so it has to maintain at 400 kV. Okay, how? So these inductors and capacitor, which means in shunt inductors and shunt capacitor, will possess an unlimited bar generation, which means it can generate as well as observe the active, uh, reactive power. Okay, so it will generate and observe the reactive power. Okay, and then moreover, it will provide there will be no losses in the active and reactive power. Okay, so this is how it will try to maintain. Okay, ideally, it says, okay, or theoretically, or ideally we can say that this SVC can maintain voltage constant by observing, if it is required to observe, then it will observe the voltage. If it is required to be injected the reactive power, it will inject here, and then you will try to maintain at a constant voltage. And then with, it will also have a capability with no active and reactive power losses. And moreover, it will provide an instantaneous response. It should provide it instantaneous response, which means this is a, just an ideal characteristic. So, which means if there is 400 volt, so it has to maintain at 400 volt. But even then, practical difficulties, even if you employ this one, you will not be able to do this. This is just an ideal characteristic of the SPS. So see here, so now earlier, I have just explained with this a clock diagram. Now we'll see with the graph okay so i v graph so now in y axis you see that voltage and then x axis is a current that is s 
Vs reactive current. Okay, so this how you will get is this ideal characteristic you will have just one straight line is a VA characteristic of a ideal SVS. So you will have just a straight line here. This is ideal. Okay, so where in capacitive one it will be leading how? So voltage will be leading the or current will be leading. So you know this, so current will be leading the voltage. Whereas in inductive, so current will be lagging the voltage. If you take reference as a voltage C here. Okay, so this is an ideal characteristic of the SVS system. Okay, so you will have just a one straight line, means you will maintain at the constant voltage. So example, if it is 400 volt, you have to maintain, then ideally you, so wherever you go, okay, so sending N or receiving N, so you will get 400 volt only. So for sending N also 400 volt, uh, receiving N also 400 volt, how it will be adjusted by these two, inductive and shunt inductors and shunt capacitors. Okay, this is an ideal case, but in actual, so this is not a case, okay? So this is an ideal case, but if you go for a realistic or real SPS system, what we can do is, so now in real, we will not get uh, one straight line VI characteristic. You will get a different VI characteristic. So, so let's see how it will behave in the okay, real scenario. Okay, so now actually when we talk about the SPS, so we know that it is just a combination of shunt capacitor or shunt inductors connected in parallel and then so on. Okay, so this, but in real one, so what we will consider is, we'll consider this inductor is, or reactor is controllable, and then we consider that is a combined one. So if you join these two, then you will get a one device known as SVS. Okay. So if when you combine the reactors and then capacitor, so you will get a one device, which is known as SVS. Okay, static bar system. Here I have mentioned that reactor is controllable, means which we can change and capacitor, just we have kept fixed capacitor bag. Normally we will find a fixed one and reactors, it depends. Sometimes load is also a reactor. Okay, so this when you combine, then you will get a one. So now you know how to, how you can plot this one. Okay, so this curve, you know how to plot if you say inductive load. And then if you are required to plot the voltage versus current, so you know how to plot the characteristic of the inductive or here. So instead of inductive, I, I'm saying that it is a reactor. So you know this. So ideally what you will have is, so in inductive load, so current will lagging behind the voltage, right? So somehow it will look like this. Okay, so you'll have a straight line, ideal case. Okay, characteristic of a inductive load. Okay, so you'll get this. And then, but here I have mentioned that inductive load is controllable in realistic SPS system. We we'll use reactive as a controllable device and then capacitor as a fix. So here controllable means, so we'll not get this ideal one. So somewhere when you reach here, we can just adjust this characteristic which means we can control this. And as for our requirement, we can control here. Yes, this one we can control, and then we, there will be certain slope. Instantly, we will not be able to bring back to zero, but what you can do is slowly, you can adjust this. And then this is a real characteristic of inductive. Okay, so that is a reactor. Now, here I have said only a fixed one, so fixed capacitor. So you know that current will lead the voltage and then you will have this type of characteristic. Okay, so how? So this one I have seen you are learning in the power electronics application also. So I think you might not have learned, but sir will teach how you are getting this one. There will be one basic formula and then all. So he will be teaching this. I have seen him preparing this thought. Okay, so that's why here I will not teach this relation, but what I will teach is only this characteristic, how you can you uh, get the characteristic of reactor, how you get the characteristic of the capacitor. If you combine the characteristic of this 
reactor and then capacitor. So then you will get the characteristic of a device that is SVS. Just now we are talking about the SVS. So later on we'll see that terrestrial control reactor and so on. But just now general one. Okay. So when we talk about the SVS, it's a combination of reactor and then capacitor. So if you combine this, you'll get this device. And then characteristic. So you just combine the characteristic of individual. So you will get the characteristic of the SBS. So if you combine this, so you are getting this, right? So this is a characteristic of SBS. So that's why here I have clearly mentioned that resulting characteristics are sufficiently general and applicable to wide range of practical SBS configurations. Okay, so in this figure, what you can see is illustrate the derivation of characteristic of SBS consisting of a controllable reactor and then okay so now this composite means here characteristic of SVS you will get by adding the individual characteristic of okay so individual characteristic of reactor and then capacitors okay so this is a practical characteristic so in ideal case you will get one just a straight line okay so but in practical, you will not have this type. Okay, so then, so next, what we can see is, okay, so now you know the characteristic. Still, we are not applying in the power system. Okay, just we are studying the characteristic of the SBS. Ideal characteristics, you have seen that, just leading and lagging. And then realistic, so it is a little bit different. So you have seen that. Now, we have to apply in the power system. So now, we have to know the characteristic of power system. Okay, so then only we will be able to apply this concept. Okay, so now we have to know the characteristic of power system. So now we have to jointly examine the, okay, so examine the SVS characteristic and then power system characteristic. So then only we will be able to know how to apply and how it will be controlled. So see here, in order to examine how the SPS perform when applied to the power system, the characteristic of SPS and power system need to be examined together. Then only we will be able to employ this or apply the SPS to control the voltage and reactive power. Okay, so now just for simplicity, okay, so for power system characteristic, so we assume that it can be represented by a Thevenin's equivalent circuit. So Thevenin's equivalent circuit, as we viewed from the, okay, so just we viewed from the bus whose voltage is to be regulated. So let's assume at this side, okay, so we have to regulate. Okay, so now if you view from here, so then we'll look like this, power system network will look like this, and then it will be represented by Thevenin's equivalent circuit. Okay, so already you know that what is mean by Thevenin's and how to do this. So you know this Thevenin's. So now our source vol uh, voltage we can consider is as ETH, Thevenin's equivalent voltage, and reactant as a or impedance as a JTXTH, which means mostly power system you might have seen that impedance will be a reacted re okay, so reactive only. So so you will be represented by XTH. And then based on this, so we can try to derive some small equation at the same time. So we'll see how we'll draw the characteristic and then we'll also try to derive the equation and then see how we will be controlling this. Okay, so just now we are not controlling, but just we are seeing the characteristic of power system and then uh, SPS characteristic, we are examining together. Okay, so see here so if you plot here okay, ideally you will have this straight line ideal vi characteristic of a sps is you get just straight line but realistic so it says it is a combination of individual characteristic and you will try get this but the corresponding voltage was respective current is shown in just it has been shown in the figure b so here you will find that okay so for a power system network so you have 
is ETH, XTH, and the source current. So now if we plot this in the y-axis voltage and then in the x-axis reactive load current. So you will have somehow characteristic like this. Okay, so how? So this all it will be given by relation in the power electronics application or power electronics. Okay, so now there is a certain small relation. There is no huge derivation as such. So you will find from the power system application, but just now you know that we will get this type of characteristics because our main focus is to control how to control this. So later on, we'll see how we will control, but you know that capacitive one, it will increase and then inductive one, it will decrease. So it has been mentioned that voltage we increases linearly with capacitive load current and decreases linearly with the inductive load current. If there is inductive load current, then current uh, voltage will decrease. And then if it is capacitive, the voltage will increase. So this is a phasor diagram. It has been shown that, okay? So current is lagging, leading, and then on. Okay, with reference to voltage. Okay, so this one, and the basic equation you will learn in the power electronics application. Okay, so now, similarly, this is some basic of, okay, so then what you will see is, we'll try to see effect of wearing a source voltage in a power system network. If you vary a source voltage, what is happening now? So initially we'll consider that our VI characteristic is, will be given by this one when source voltage is ETHO. Okay, so why we have written TH is because of Thevenin. So we have represented our system network by a Thevenin's equivalent circuit. So we uh, ETH. So now if we increase change or increase by del ETH, so your characteristic will be look like this. Okay, it will also increase. Okay, then similarly, if you decrease, so your characteristic will also decrease. And similarly, if you try to change the reactance, okay, so reactance, so similarly, it will also change here, but here when we increase the reactance, okay, so here we, when we increase the reactance, so see here your voltage will be decreasing, okay, when current increase, and then similarly here, voltage will be increasing this is because of capacitive okay capacitive and inductive so property you know that okay so using this so now you let's see composite of this spc a power system characteristic let's combine so this one is for power uh, or system network represented by having a circuit and then this one will be just combination of this so now if you combine system here means power system if you combine the system and you try to find the voltage v you can find from here v will be equal to eth minus is is xth right this is system characteristic power system characteristic we will be given by v equal to voltage at the terminal which we have to control later on terminal will be equal to eth minus xth because reactance or impedance is xth and is okay then this is a power system characteristic and then sps characteristic within the control range can be defined by the slope reactant xl will be given by so actually sps characteristic okay so where you have seen here sps this ideal case another one is sba characteristic so actually in sps this is a control region which we can control right other one when you increase it will increase when you decrease so current will also uh, when you increase the current voltage will also increase when we decrease the current but here we can at least we can try to we can control which means within this range we can control the voltage and then current so in such case so now we can get the equation by this okay so v will be equal to v naught means initial plus reactant at that slope which i have shown here this slope okay reactant at the slope into current there okay so current flowing in so i s so let it be equation number two so first equation is for 
system characteristic second equation is for sps characteristic okay so now okay so these are the, actually these two are the composite characteristic of sps and power system characteristics so now let's see how we can control okay so now applying this one this part is very important other one or is so important but you have to know that how you have got this straight line and all but here so we are talking mainly of how we can control the s a voltage by using a sps in the power system okay so now see here this power uh, solution of sps and power system can be characterized graphically okay so normally we can draw this graph like this and then you know that how system characteristic look like see here this is a system characteristic means sbs uh, sorry not system it is a sbs characteristic and power system characteristic you know that we will get one straight line that's why it has been written system reactive load characteristic so now from here so let's explain one by one now initially let's consider this is a initial characteristic of okay so initial characteristic of a reactive block characteristic initially so which you will have voltage v naught okay and then is will also be zero see here voltage will be v naught okay so we, we consider that initially so it will be v naught and then current will be zero okay so now let's assume that okay so let's assume that that voltage has been increased okay or okay so that eth has been increased when you increase so what it will happen is or system load characteristic has changed or increase here example that eth has been increased so what it will happen is so this characteristic will change this is the initial one and then this is when it increase so now see here if you don't have sps so your voltage will move to v1 from v0 are getting now so from v0 it will directly jump to the v1 okay but if you have employed the svs okay then instead of jumping your voltage from v0 to v1 see here it will shift a different point here b to the point b and then your voltage will be see here v3 this much voltage has been controlled by observing this much amount of inductive current okay which means this sps has consumed or observed the i3 amount of current and then you are able to control the voltage or you are not you are able to control the voltage to v3 from the v1 so v1 when there is no sps system then your voltage changes will be huge one here yeah? but if there is sps so your system load characteristic intersect at the point b and then so your voltage will be adjusted to v3 okay so by observing the inductive current i3 this is how we can control so similarly similarly if you if this eth has been decreased means our system voltage is decreasing now so now in such case what you will do is you see here initially v not if it has been decreased so it will move to the point okay so voltage will directly increase to v2 if there is no sps okay if there is no sps then it will jump to v2 from v not but if you have a sps system so it will move to the your point will shift to c and then this much okay voltage we can control to v4 by observing the uh, not observing here we have to inject right injecting the current i4 capacitive current i4 okay so this is how we can control the voltage using the svs okay so once more i will explain here Okay, so initially we consider that our system load characteristic has a voltage V naught, and then current is 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 equal to zero. Okay, so now 
what it will happen is now let's assume that your voltage has eth has been increased okay del th has been uh, eth is equal okay so your new one is e naught plus del eth okay so it has been increased by del th so in such case what it has happened is so now your system characteristic is represented by this one okay so now if there is no sbs system or there so what it, you will get is so your voltage will increase from v naught or voltage will changes from v naught to v1 here okay this means there is no sps characters but if there is a sps system employed what it will do is so your new location it will not come back to a definitely but it will at least try to control the voltage by changing the position to b okay so then your new voltage will be v3 instead of v1 if you employ the spa characteristic by observing the this much reactive current okay then similarly similarly if it is decrease okay then what it will do is so now instead of directly jumping to v2 for new voltage so it will change the position to c from a and then your voltage will be controlled to v4 so by injecting the current this much this much current it will be injected there by the sps and then it will control it okay so this is how we control the voltage using the spi characteristic and this all characteristic so you have known that okay so earlier one individually we have gone through and then so this is a SPS characteristic and the other one is a system uh, reactive load characteristics. So based on this, so we can control the voltage here. Okay, so by employing the SPS, so we can control the, control the voltage here. Okay, so this is a just explanation which I have said here. If the system voltage increased by del TH here, del TH, we will increase to V1 without SVX characteristics, but with SVS, the operating point will move to B. Okay, operating point will move to point B from point A, and then observing inductive current I3. So your new voltage, which is called as a control one, will come under uh, at V3. Okay, this is the explanation. Similarly, if the source voltage decreases, the SVS will hold at voltage at v4 instead of v2 without the sps so without the sps so it will directly jump to the v2 but if there is sps so it will hold at v4 so this is explanation of the okay, explanation what i have already done but here one thing is if there is no slope here okay so if there is no slope here if it is an ideal one means you will have one straight line just no slope and then if there is a straight line like this okay so if it is just a straight line ideal characteristic so what you will have is so in this case okay so in this case voltage would have been held at v naught only so since the it has certain slope in actual sps characteristics so we are not able to hold at a v naught ideally we said that we have to maintain at v naught which means 400 volt means 400 volt only we have to maintain ideally but practically we will not be able to maintain at 400 volt but it can vary that's why it has been written as acceptable range there will be plus minus right but if there is no sps system what it will happen it will go beyond the limited or acceptable range that's why we are employing the sps and then try to control the voltage this is explanation okay then other one is just earlier one sps system just we are employing the sps system and we are trying to find out but now we'll try to see this is a sps system only okay so this is a sps system but in sps system now we'll try to see that this capacitor can be switched on or off depending on our requirement by using a relay current sensing element okay so you can switch on 
as well as switch off based on our requirement. But earlier one, just I have explained that we employ the SPS. But here we, we are employing the SPS, but with the facility to either switch on or switch off. Okay. So in the example shown in figure five earlier figure, what we have seen is this SPS control range will be exceeded for large variation in system condition. So if there is a huge variation, so we will not be able to control by using the earlier example. But if you use this, there is a facility. If it is not required, then we can switch off. When it requires, we will switch on, keep on doing this. So the use of switched capacitor bank can extend the continuous control range of SPS, which means if you have a switched one, but definitely it will be costlier than the earlier one. But here you will have a number of capacitor in, just now I have shown only one, two, three, but there will be a number of capacitor with this switched facility. So if it goes beyond controllable, so then you will try to switch on the more number of capacitors. Okay, so this figure will be illustrated in the figure six, that is use of switched capacitor to extend the continuous control range, which means we'll keep on controlling this. Okay, so, but for earlier one, just we have seen that certain range only, but here, if your number of capacitor connected, so then it will keep on. Okay, so it will extend the continuous control range. Okay, so in such case, so now each thyristor or mechanical switches here. Earlier one, we have not talked about the switch. Okay, so just actually SPS is a shunt capacitor or shunt reactor. But if you add some switches, either mechanical switches or thyristor. So basically nowadays we are not using mechanical switch. It's going through the power electronics device that is a thyristor. So in such case, so what you can do is, so you can also control or this control region can be extended okay, continuously. Okay, so that's where you can either thyristor or mechanical switch may be used for switching the capacitor in and out automatically. Actually here, so not a manual one, when we said I was switching on and off, so it has to be done automatically by voltage sensing control, which means here we have a voltage control of voltage we are carrying out, so it will have a voltage sensing control release, and then if it goes beyond, okay, and then what we can see is, so if you go beyond the control range, and then if we are on this capacitor, okay, it's not able to control, then it will sense that, and then it will on this capacitor, and it will try to control. And if, again, if these two, when you on these two, if you're not able to control, then another, it will have number of this. So another capacitor will be switched on. And then if it, Okay, can control by using this one capacitor only, then other will be put off or switch out. Okay, so this is how we can control the voltage. Okay, so, but normally you will see at least in the one capacitor, so you will see inductors connected here. Okay, one inductors connected here. Normally you will see why we record this one is normally in power system, you might have heard something about the harmonic. There is a disturbances by the harmonics. So in order to filter the harmonic, so harmonic can be filtered by this inductive, right? Inductive and then capacitive connected together. So now to in order to filter the harmonics, so you will see at least one capacitor along with the inductors. Okay, so in the figure, unswitched capacitor includes a reactor for filtering the harmonics, which means unswitched. Normally, this will not be switched one because of harmonics will be there, right? So we have to filter out these harmonics. So at least one unswitched capacitor with the inductors okay, to filter the harmonics, it will have this facility, okay? So this is how we can control the voltage by using SVS. Okay, so now you can see, 
if you observe or if you have listened carefully, you can know that this SVS is not a source of voltage. Means which it will not have not act as a source of voltage. Instead, it will be acting as a okay. Instead, it will alter the system voltage at the point of connection. Okay, by wearing the reactive current drawn or supplied to the system. Actually, this SPS, so there is a misconception, okay? So if you're not able to understand clearly, you may think that SPS is a voltage source, which will provide the voltage. Actually, it is not a voltage source. It is a device which will alter or control the system voltage. Okay, so if it is 400 volt and if it goes to 600 volt, it will try to bring back to the a 400 uh, 400 volt by either consuming or observing or generating the reactive power okay so it, it actually it is not a voltage source but already you have learned about the synchronous condenser okay. so this synchronous condenser actually it is a voltage source okay so not a Okay, it will not alter, but it will try to inject the voltage here, right? Okay, so this is known as differences between, sorry, this differences between synchronous condenser and then SPS. Okay, but in effect, SPS acts as a variable load also. Okay, sometimes it will act as a variable reactive load, which is adjusted to keep the AC voltage nearly constant. Means so it will try to observe the reactive power or it will try to inject the reactive power and then try to maintain the voltage constant okay this is one function of sps actually you have to understand that it is not a, a source of voltage unlike synchronous condenser okay so so that's all about how to control the voltage using a SPS. So are you able to get in this? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, so sir. actually I plan only this much for today to save your data for some other work. Okay, so the, I will not take more than I only I've said last so, so I will not take more than 30 to 45 minutes. So nearly 45 minutes has been gone. Okay, so that's all about the uh, today's session. So tomorrow we will go the detail about the SVS. One example of SVC now. All these uh, different types of SVC will fall under SVS. It's just as a system I have explained. So now tomorrow we'll see one example of SPC and how we, we will control the voltage. Okay, so I'm getting now at, and then one thing is most of you are requesting the uh, YouTube, which we have to record. Okay, so but so recording facility is there in the uh, this Zoom also, but uh, when they listen that, okay, so there is not, I think it depends on the our system computer. So my computer is not recording well. Sometimes, okay, so it's very loud. Sometimes we cannot hear also, but even though I'm speaking, okay, so very loud, okay, here even some of my friends are disturbing. But uh, when they try to listen that, it is not coming good. Okay, so sometimes it is very loud. Sometimes we are not able to hear properly also. So when they try to listen, so most of you are preferring that YouTube one. So what I will try to do is, Okay, so in this uh, PowerPoint itself, there is one facility to record. Okay, so I'll try to record in this PowerPoint and then uh, I think I will not upload in VLE because uh, the storage problem is there. So what I will do is I will try to share via email. Email, so when we say share by email, so definitely, again, email also has certain limitation, but we, I will try to send by Google Drive. Okay, so I think most of you are preferring that. Okay, but what I feel is, I think it, this one will be more than enough. For just listening, voice recording, and then so my, okay, so it depends on individual. Okay, so now what I will do is, I will try to uh, 
record in the PowerPoint itself, and I'll try to. But uh, this video, I try to record and then listen. But sometimes I can hear very loud sound. Sometimes not able to hear. So this is not a problem of software, but this might be the problem of our my system. Okay, so this one I'll try to see. Okay, so but today also I have seen one request. Okay, so I'll try to see that. Okay, so don't worry about this one. So other one. Okay, so only thing is if you have doubt, please try to ask. Okay, so here in today's lecture, it's very important to know this one. Okay, this diagram is very, very important. You have to know that graphical solution of SPS operating point for given system condition. How you will control the voltage. This is very important. And then you have to know that this SPCS, SPS is not a voltage source. Okay, you have to know that SPS is not a voltage source. Instead, it will be a it will be just altering the system voltage and try to bring back or control the voltage. Okay, so most of our student or most of us is understand is this SPS is like a voltage source, unlike synchronous condenser. Okay, so this all about today's lecture. And then synchronous condenser. So already you have learned. So I prepare, I, I, I will upload in the VLE. You can go through that. It's, Yes, I have taken out from the machine textbook only. So same, I have not gone further. Okay, so because nowadays, instead of synchronous con uh, condenser, they are going through this SPS or SPC one. So this I will focus more on SPC synchronous condenser one. I will upload in the VLE. You try to see that. Okay, so that's all for today. Okay, so thank you for coming online. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you, thank you. Thank you, sir.